Theresa Hoover Memorial United Methodist Church online worship service. This morning, once again, we thank you for join, joining us. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Now, once again, we're dealing with this virus that has creeped its ugly head again, but in spite of the virus, we will continue to praise God. We will continue to worship God be it in the sanctuary or online. So thank you for joining us. We pray that as you are with us, that you will continue to honor God, that you will share the worship experience here with us. If you are visiting with us the first time, thank you for joining us. Just share, share, share. Be engaged in the service. And guess what? Stay till the end. You never know how God's going to bless you. So again, thank you. I'm Pastor Deborah Bell, and we're glad to have you in the service today. God bless. Oh, all of the things my God has prepared. Good morning, family. My name is Bobby Cannon. I am a member at Hoover United Methodist Church. This morning I'll be reading the scripture from Mark 6, 30 through 34 out of the New Living Translation. Jesus feeds 5,000. The apostle returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Good morning. So glad to be in service one more time. Join us in prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline our hearts and grant us your peace. We thank you, Lord, for this day and for all who gather here this morning in your name. Give us the kind of religion, the thoughts that will help to lift up those who are down, to give courage to those who are in sorrow, and to do those things which will make this world a better place in which to live. Oh Lord, we pray this morning for those who are sick and for those who are afflicted. Even in the midst of time when we thought that the pandemic was over, we realized that we are still in the place where it can come again. We pray this morning, O oh God, for those who are hospitalized, for those who are suffering from the pandemic. We pray that you would give them the courage and the strength to know 
that you are God and beside you, there are none other. And for those, O oh Lord, who are suffering for being without job, for those who are being frustrated and confused about our way of living, for those who are having economic problems within their lives, O oh Lord, have mercy upon each and every one of us. Bring us together so that we might be able to guide those who are going in the wrong direction. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of those things, O oh Lord, which were not pleasing within your sight and cause us to move forward to make sure that you and those who follow you will incline our lips and our hearts to speak the truth. O oh Lord, for those who are in the government of our United States of America today, we pray that you would bring us together so that there will be neither right nor left, neither red nor blue, but we will all realize that we are just human beings trying to get over in this life in which we live. We pray, O oh God, for the people who are getting ready to be involved in this world. Help us to do the things that's right within our sight. For our children, as they get ready to go back to school, O oh Lord, we pray that somehow we will work out those problems so that there will not be an argument over whether or not they wear a mask or not. For those who have not received their pandemic vaccination, O oh Lord, we pray that somehow that they will be encouraged to do the thing which will be pleasing within your sight so that this world will be a better place for each one of us to live. So guide and direct us in all we do. For those persons who are in government, who have left their homes in Texas and gone to Washington, O oh Lord, let them have a decent conversation and be able to recognize as one another that we all are for the good of mankind and for those who love the Lord. Help them to compromise. Help them to look at themselves. Help them to look at others to make sure that this world is a world in which we can live together as people rather than to die together as food. Be with us and guide us in all we do. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for all that you've done for us. And as we move forward, oh Lord, keep us in the right path. This is my prayer for the morning. Have mercy upon us, guide us, walk with us, talk with us, encourage us, and help us to move all the way through the problem that we see and we face day to day. Amen and praise God. We love you. Thank you. Amen. We'd like to invite you to join us in the worship of giving. You can give through our online giving services. Uh, you can download our uh, Giveify app, which you'll see listed below. If you like, you can even mail your check to the Russell Hoover Memorial United Methodist Church, 4000 West 13th Street in Little Rock, Arkansas. All the information will follow. And again, your gifts help plant a seed so that we can continue to do ministry, so that we can work in the community with those persons who might be struggling with mental health, substance abuse, literacy, or any of those social ills that are there. Again, your dollars bless us so that we might bless each other. So again, thank you. We appreciate your gifts, which you have sown thus far, and we look forward to you entering a seat so that we may continue to walk with Jesus and provide services to those people who might be the least, the last, and the lost. Somebody say, God has spoken, and I agree. My breakthrough is here. Let's get that. Let's get that.
over the world We want to sing this over you Let me hear you say, say Just sing it out. Again, I want to thank you for joining us uh, today in our online worship experience as we prepare now for the word of God to go forth. Let us go to prayer. Dear God, once again, we are in this space, in this place around this country, around this world, ready to hear a word from you. God, I pray that you will again provide me what it, with what it is that you would want me to share as we continue in the worship experience and listen for things that have been heavy loads that we've been carrying. God, I ask that you will anoint this word, bless me, so that I can bring a message to reach your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. So during this month of July, we have been in a four-week sermon series entitled Baggage. This four-week series has helped us to uncover some of the heavy baggage that we carry, the baggage of fear and pride and bitterness. So during this four week series, we are preparing ourselves and inviting God to free us of that heavy load, that baggage that we continue to carry. You know, oftentimes our baggage is, is filled with emotions that we sometimes not even aware of. But God is inviting us to let go of the burdens, unpack it, get rid of it, and trust him to restore our brokenness and help us to experience the freedom and peace that he offers. So this morning, the last part of our series, the last topic for our series is focusing on jealousy. So the title of my sermon today is just simply that, jealousy, jealousy. The scripture context will come from Genesis 37, verses 3 through 11, and I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, that's Genesis 37, verses 3 through 11. If you're at home, get your, your Bibles out, get your apps out, and let us go to the Word of God. And it reads, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So one night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon, Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you 
ever been jealous? Jealous of what someone else had? Jealous of someone else's gifts or their abilities, of their relationships, or even of their spirituality? Have you ever been jealous? You know, we don't think about jealousy as a sin. Jealousy is a sin unto God. Did you know that? It is not an attribute of a good Christian or of a good believer. When was the last time you really thought about jealousy and the damage this sin is doing in your life? Now, what is jealousy? Let's say what jealousy is. Jealousy is defined as being envious of someone who has something that we do not have. It has been envious of someone else's success, someone else's achievements, someone else's body, someone else's house, someone else. We are jealous. Someone else's breakthrough. They've had a breakthrough of recovery, a, a breakthrough of receiving a gift of whatever it is that they wanted. Jealousy can ruin relationships. Jealousy is toxic, but Jesus offers restoration. Jesus offers restoration when we leave the baggage of envy and jealousy at his feet. You see, jealousy starts even at a early age as children. It starts even as children. We're jealous because someone has a doll or a ball, a ball or we're just jealous. It starts even as a children. And the sad part about it, it carries on for a lifetime. There are people who in their 90s who are still jealous about a situation, a person, or something. Jealousy is toxic. You know, jealousy can wreck the love between two people, and it really brings about jealousy in our families. It strikes families consistently. Jealousy is even in the church, amen? Jealousy is in the church even with Christian believers. Jealousy is in our communities. Jealousy is in the nation, which can cause wars. You see, jealousy is when someone likes your boo, your man, your other person in your life more than what you think they should. Jealousy over a co-worker because you feel that person might, got, might have gotten a position or something that you wanted. Jealousy about where someone might live. They live in a better home or they drive a car that you wish you had, like a Tesla. And somebody's jealous because somebody's driving a Tesla, but somebody got a car, I bet. Jealousy is about persons who might have more money. The jealousy you feel that someone got preferential treatment over you because of their skin color or because of their age or because of their gender. Jealousy is baggage. It's something we need to get rid of. Friends, you know what? I know you know what I'm talking about because we all have felt the wrong. We've all been hurt and we've all been betrayed. Some of us are devastated about some jealous acts that's happened in our family. We're angry and we're still holding on to what happened 5, 10, 15 years ago because someone we felt had more or they wronged us. Now, let, let me share this. There is a difference between feeling jealous and acting out on the jealousy. You hear me? There's a difference. In the passage that was read, our scripture context this morning, from Genesis, it talks about the story that some of us are familiar with, about Joseph and the coat, the beautiful coat of colors that the father, Jacob, gave his son, uh, Joseph, this story is about a favorite son. It's about a favorite son who was the youngest of the family. You heard me share that. This is a father who presented his son with this beautiful coat to express his love, but he didn't do that for his other children. In verse 4, it says, but his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. He showed favoritism. He showed it. Joseph really didn't make it much easier, did, it? did he, as you heard the, the story, the passage? Because he aggravated the brothers when he shared those dreams that he had. He aggravated them by making them feel that he, they should pay homage to him, that they should bow down to him from these dreams. 
as a result of jealousy, Jesus, in this story, as a result of the jealousy, the brothers wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. But, you know, they really didn't get a chance to commit that act. Although they did sell him into slavery. They sold him into slavery. His, his brother Reuben convinced his brothers not to kill him, but to sell him into slavery. You know, the jealousy that they had wreaked even more havoc because once they plotted to kill him, what they had to do was to do, to do what sometimes we do when we're jealous. They ended up telling a lie. They lied to their father and said that their brother, Joseph, had been killed by wild animals. And what they did, they took that beautiful coat that the father had given him. They took it to the father and said, this is the bloodstained robe that we found. So, of course, the father was devastated. He was hurt. He was shocked because he lost his favorite son, Joseph. But Joseph really wasn't killed, but he was thrown in a pit. You know, one of the worst things about jealousy is that it happens most often in families. In most cases, jealousy is not a problem with a stranger. It's not a problem with a stranger, but it's a problem with someone who is closely connected with us. It happens in our families, people who were close. It happens on our job and our workplaces. It happens even with our closest friends. It happens even in the church. You know, strangers, you know, they come and go. They're not there often. But the one thing about someone who's close to you and connected to you uh, as in a relationship or in your family is that you see them day to day, week to week, month to month. They are always there. But the one thing about jealousy and envy, it causes divisiveness. It can split a family. It could split a relationship. It could split a church even. And we've seen that happen in many times and places. So let me just ask you, you heard the story about Joseph. Let me ask you, have you ever wanted something that was not yours? Just think about it. You don't have to put anything in the comments. Don't do that. Have you ever wanted something that was not yours? Have you ever wanted someone else? Wanted what someone else had. You wish you had. I wish I had, I wish I had that house. I wish I had that body. I wish I had that, that makeup, that glamorous life. Have you ever wanted something so bad that somebody else had that it just took over your mind and overpowered you? So now the jealousy is no longer a thought, but you're trying to find a way to act upon that thought in order to get what it is that that person might have. You know, jealousy actually comes from being insecure and it comes from envy and it comes from fear. When you're jealous, in some cases, in most cases, it means that you are not satisfied with who you are and what you have. You see, jealousy is the act of wanting to be like other people. We want to be able to, to, uh, have that figure or wear that dress. We want to be able to attract certain things. We want that education. That's what je we want what other people have. And when you are unable to achieve these things, you get jealous of the person or the people or the thing, and you feel that those things are better than you are. But that's not so. Did you know that, did you know that jealousy is a hard issue? Jealousy is a hard issue. When I'm jealous, it means I have a jealous heart. Now, one thing, if a heart is sick, if a heart is sick, a body will most likely fail. It doesn't matter how healthy the other organs is, are in your body. In most cases, when you have a heart issue, everything fails. When jealousy takes root, when jealousy takes root in your heart, when jealousy takes root in our heart, it can cause all kinds of problems. You ever been there? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever experienced it? It can cause all kinds of problems. Like we feel bitter, and then we're stressed, and then we're angry, and then we're confused. Jealousy can lead to us having to tell a lie, 
It can lead to us stealing, gossiping, amen? Jealousy leads to something hurting someone else. You know, jealousy even leads to murder. You've heard of that before. Relationships in workplaces where people are so jealous, they go back in and they start shooting up the place. Help us, Jesus. Thinking worldly, thinking about being in a worldly situation is not good for us. The sin is not in the thought again. The sin is not in the thought of being jealous, but the sin is in the action that we take in response to that. The lies that we tell, the stealing that we do, the grief, the bitter. That's where in Proverbs 27 and 4 it says, anger is cruel and wrath is a flood, but jealousy is even more dangerous. Have mercy. Jealousy and envy is even more dangerous. And Mark, Jesus tells us that, that jealousy is horrible, just like murder or adultery. So this morning, what can we do about that jealous feeling, that envious feeling that we have? You know, wouldn't it be nice if we can just unpack envy, if we could just unpack resentment, if we could just let go of the bitterness, let go of being jealous, jealous, and if we can just stop carrying those heavy baggages of sin. Well, people, friends, it's easier said than done. I even know that. When you feel jealous, immediately take that thought to the Lord and ask him to help strengthen you and help, ask him to help you to identify why you're, help him, ask God to help you to understand what the jealousy is about. Pray that he can remove the feeling from you. Don't compare yourself to others that don't work. Examine how you feel. You see, Joseph's brother, his brothers, had spent too much time focusing on their brother, the favorite son. They spent too much time doing that, which caused the brothers to covet his position and the relationship he had with his fathers. But in Exodus 20, verse 7, it says, you must not cover your neighbor's house. You must not cover your neighbor's wife the male or female servant, the ox or the donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. You're not to covet it. It says that in Exodus 20. Have you ever thought about how much time you spend comparing your life to others? Just think about how you're affected by comparing and coveting. And then what can you do to stop that in your life? You know, when we become jealous, we forget about the blessings that God has provided. We forget about it. When you're jealous, you forget about what all God has done for you. We forget to count our blessings when we're jealous. We forget to do that. God has blessed us. When I consider all the blessings that, that I've had in my life, that little jealousy that I might have had does not weigh up anywhere near how God has blessed me and how he has blessed my family. It's impossible for us to praise God for his gifts and his goodness when we're jealous. It's impossible. You just can't do it. You can't praise God and then be jealous the very next moment. It don't work like that. We should realize that God has blessed us. If we put ourselves in the position that people are in in other countries, there should be no room for us to be jealous. We have more than what we need right here in this country. So to prevent being envious and jealous, we have to accept God's sovereignty. We have to accept God's rule over our lives. It is God who decides what happened in our lives. It is not up to us. He may choose one path for me and a different path for you. We have to accept it and stop being jealous, get rid of the baggage, stop being envious, let it go. Ephesians 1 and 11 says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, praise the Lord, and he makes everything work out according to his plan, not our plan. Remember, God is in control, not you. Yet, yes, 
we struggle with the same temptations that people did some thousand of years ago, the same temptation. We will covet what others have. We will envy those who are smarter. <laughs> Even a thousand years ago, those who were richer, years ago, those who were more powerful were still in the same place. Those who might have been more prettier or kinder. The real issue is how to handle it. How will you handle it? It's going to happen. How will you handle it? Now, it won't be easy, but there are three things that you can do. The first thing, you can be about praying. You can be planning, number two, and you can have a purpose which will make you understand that you don't have to be jealous. As Christians, we have to live on the defense because we know that jealousy and envy will happen. We can't be in the defense mode. We should prepare for any possible sin or temptation to come our way and know exactly what we're going to do about it because it will come. I'm a witness. It will happen. You know, it's time, people. It's time, friends, for us to make a plan to get rid of this baggage, this baggage of envy and jealousy. And those three steps I shared with you, we have to take it and we have to begin to see how we're going to make that happen. So, so what will you do about it? The first thing you need to do, as I said, you must pray. Begin a practice of praying for those who you are jealous of. Initially, it's going to be real hard. We're going to struggle. I'm going to struggle to do that initially. Been there, done that as well. It's not impossible. It can happen. And then you have to pray offensively, asking the Lord to prepare you for what's to come and asking him to show you which steps to take to avoid being jealous. And then the second thing you have to do, you have to learn the signs of how jealousy and envy will sneak up on you. So you have to have a plan to avoid it. If you have any negative or sarcastic thoughts or you feel like cussing them out or arguing with that person, you need to do one thing. Hold your tongue. Hold your tongue and ask yourself why you want to go there. Instead of that negative stuff, let it go. Speak positive. Compliment them. Celebrate their breakthroughs. And even smile and, and maybe even give them a big hug. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do, but with practice, it's possible. And then the last thing you must do, you, you must remember that you have a purpose in your life. God has blessed you with a purpose. Some of us don't know what it is. We need to be working on that. If you are a follower of Christ and you want to please him, you need to do that by loving others and putting others first and not yourself. Jealousy. And envy has no room to thrive in you when you're, when you're a believer, when you're a Christian, when you love God. God has an assignment for each one of us today. You know what? You'll be so overcome and overwhelmed by this power and this purpose that he gives you that your whole life will have a brand new perspective. And you won't worry about the baggage that you've been holding onto and dragging around. You know, jealousy, in my closing, and envy... Just say, it's not welcome in my heart. It's not welcome in my spirit. Let it know that. Don't let it rent space in your heart. Get rid of the jealousy and envy. Get rid of the baggage. Unpack it. Let it go. Throw it away. Cast it away. You can do this. Love God. Love people. And be thankful for all the things that God has provided you with. Don't. Fall into the trap of the enemy. Let go of the baggage. Unpack it. Let us today learn this lesson from the life that Joseph lived. Let it go. Amen. This is an invitation to those who might still be struggling with carrying that load, that burden, that resentment, envy, whatever it is. This is an invitation to you. If you are ready to release that, to let it go, we invite you to become a part of the Hoover Church family. Come and join with us and we will walk with you as you are able to release that thing that might be holding you back. So again, you are invited to be a part of the Hoover Church family. Now, 
Let us prepare for the benediction. God, we ask that as we have gathered here, Lord, that you will give us a clean heart, God. Give us a clean heart so that we may serve thee. God, we ask that you will fix our heart so that we can be used by you, God. This morning, we ask that you go forth. Be the light for those who are still carrying heavy baggage. In Jesus' name, go forth and be blessed. Perfect all that concerns Just worship and waiting, even if things look crazy, it's yours for the taking.